Welcome to Bamford Rose and it's forum chat time. This week's forum chat, I've picked out the Craston Martin. Now this looks a great project for the guy that's doing it and he looks like he's gonna thoroughly enjoy it. But there are people that I know from reading that forum and others that have got in touch with me. They think that buying a salvage car is a route into Aston ownership. It definitely is not one that I would advise. Have many cars come here after an incident and we quote the repair to the insurance company. And if it gets repaired, then great. If it doesn't, because the repair value has gone over a th certain threshold, normally 65, 70% of the car's market value, then the insurance company would choose to write the car off. As if by magic, we have one of those on site here today. So this black V8 Vantage was quietly parked on the side of a road and a double-decker London bus came and rammed it and sideswiped the car, pushed the front and the rear into the curb and it's lost the front wheel, obliterated that front rim as you can see in the picture and has done quite a bit of mechanical damage. So we had this car here to assess what it needed for a full repair and now I can show you the parts list. We've got £18,000 worth of parts, excluding VAT. These three wheels, front wing, front grille, front bumper, rear bumper, a near side sill, a headlamp, damper, spring, wishbone arms, full corner, steering rack, front anti-roll bar, a drop link arm, wheel bearing, ABS sensor. What really tipped the balance on this repair was the rear subframe. So what you wouldn't notice from pictures just looking at the car is that the impact on the rear has actually twisted the rear subframe. These are drive shaft because along with bending the rear subframe it's, it's impacted and compromised the drive shaft at the CV joint and a couple of suspension arms on the rear. I've seen this all too often. You'll now see that car picked up by whatever salvage company and it'll be for sale. It will probably be for sale as a complete car. It will just be labeled an uneconomic to repair category, not a cat category which cannot be repaired and the car must not be on the road again. And I have a typically underestimated advert of something like light bodywork damage minor front suspension work needed. Somebody might see it and believe that description, but buying a car from salvage, what you really need to find out is the repair quote that the repairer submitted to the insurance company before the car went to salvage. Obviously, you're never gonna find that out. Someone will buy that black V8 Vantage as a complete car, thinking that they're gonna put it back on the road. Front corner, not too expensive, bit of body work, and the car's back on the road. That rear frame damage will go unnoticed, unreported, and won't be found out until somebody tries to set the geometry up. Then they might source a second-hand rear frame from somewhere, build it, then realize the drive shaft's compromised. We never run the car, obviously, after its accident. It could well be that the diff is compromised as well. The chances of being stung by the car needing more components is more likely than getting off with a bit of a light parts order and making a success of the repair fairly cheaply. These cars really are only worthwhile st to strip for bits and to sell the parts separately. People trying to put these cars back on the road will suddenly find out that the parts bill is far too big than they're prepared to spend and they'll make a half-hearted job of putting a car back on the road. Unless someone really doesn't care for that maths and they're buying themselves a project which they're going to invest a load of time in and it's enjoyable for them. If that's the case, then so be it. But buying a salvage car shouldn't really be a route into Aston ownership. Here's an example of the ways which people cut corners to put the car back on the road. It's in reply to the poster of the Craston Martin. He says, we did the exact same thing three years ago and bought a salvage car. Brilliant car. I still love and have it. Crash can cost is ridiculous. And only a dealer can sell them. They wanted 2K for one. We heated it up and straightened the bend. So a bracket and a crash can has done its job. It's deformed, it's absorbed the impact and it's now fit for the bin. But someone has straightened it and put it back on the car again. So if that component was ever asked to absorb and ever impact, it's not, and it's not gonna crumble, and it's not gonna contain the energy it's supposed to. If that is their standard of workmanship, then what else have they done on the rest of the car? There's plenty of fish in the sea, and a car with a category 
is just something I'd steer clear of. They're always more troublesome than buying a straight car to start with, and they never really shrug off that feeling of being repaired, repaired badly, and drive compromised because of it. If it wasn't suspension components or anything to do with the drive line, why the car was written off, and perhaps it was just superficial bodywork and cosmetics. On a lot of these cars that I've seen, if you're being really critical about the bodywork, look at it from a distance. Are the wings hung off the car properly, symmetrically? Are all panel gaps perfect? Gap around the headlamps, gap around the bumper to wing, wing to the door, door to the sill, you'll find an error somewhere, meaning that mostly all of these cars just always live with some symptom of, of its previous history. Another important thing to consider is what was that car's status like pre-accident? It could have been like one of those cars I featured before, uh, which was a distressed V8 versus a cherished V8. Well, let's just say that accident damaged car was already significantly distressed pre-accident. So you've got the accident repair costs to fund. And then when you get the car back on the road, you realize that dampers, wishbone arms, brakes, air com parts of, of the circuit, a whole host of things that normally go wrong on these cars also need replacing. So there you find that your accident repair cost purchase price cost at the salvage and then the repairs and maintenance cost that that car needed pre-accident anyway all of that lot added together can most often be significantly more than getting yourself in the seat of a much younger lower mileage straight car to start with and other than the labor of love or enjoying the job enjoying the journey then i really don't see that route into Aston ownership being robust. Hope you like that forum chat and we'll see you on the next one.